All right. Welcome to the Knicks Film School Post Game Show, uh, presented by Bet US. We have our first uh, real bummer of a game uh, of the season. Obviously, only the second loss. I I would not categorize the opening night loss to Boston as a bummer. That was just a, I mean, that was more of a monstrosity than anything else. You put it behind you as soon as you uh, you got done with it. Um, this one this one hurt a little bit. Uh, this one hurt a little bit, mostly because I think. The Knicks did not come out playing their best ball, certainly, um, which we will get into. But they still found a way to have a 13-point lead in the third quarter. And uh, then they just let it completely evaporate. And the reason why they let it evaporate, and uh, I saw James Edwards already tweeted about this uh, from The Athletic, is because they went through a stretch of basketball in the late third quarter and early fourth quarter. Um, where they just couldn't generate any anything resembling sign- uh, efficient offense. And yes, I've been talking for a few minutes here at the top, and I haven't mentioned the name Carl Anthony Towns, even though obviously the story of the game uh, is the fact that Carl Anthony Towns took, well, until he took a meaningless two-pointer with uh, like five seconds left, that meant, meant absolutely nothing, uh, took the same amount of shots in this game as campaign. Um, if you have campaign on your basketball team and you have Carl Anthony Towns on your basketball team, um, needless to say, uh, as I realize Mike is not selected, hopefully that sounds better. Uh, needless to say, you need to have Carl Anthony Towns uh, shooting more than campaign, uh, especially considering the fact that camp played, campaign played 10 minutes in this game and Carl Anthony Towns played uh, 32. Um, and here it is, uh, four for eight. And again, one of those is meaningless one at the end. Um, this is not why the Knicks traded for Carl Anthony Towns. This is not why uh, any team trades for any transformative offensive player. And I think that's where I kind of want to sit for a second. Because we've talked, certainly me and basically everybody who watches the Knicks and, and cares about dissecting the Knicks, about Carl Anthony Towns and the, and the impact that he has on this team and, and obviously specifically this offense, although we're going to have to talk about Carlton Towns defense too, uh, in this game, because it factored in and not in a, in a positive way. It wasn't all bad, but the most significant part was, was not positive. We, I, I use that word. Others have used that word transformative. And I think we've seen that. I think we've seen that. I think we saw that in all three games. I think we saw it at times tonight. The tough part about having a player who simply by being out there, simply by existing on the court, having like changing everything that you're capable of doing on the offensive side of the floor. The tough part then kind of comes with, okay, you know, we got all these new toys. What do we want to play with first? And I'll even, I'll try to take the analogy a step further. These aren't pre-assembled toys. This is Christmas morning and dad's sitting there with the screwdriver looking like he wants to put his head through a wall because all of these things, again, require assembly. And this offense, I think it was pretty clear after this game, requires a little bit of assembly in that they need to figure out when this guy's on the floor and it opens up all these other things for all these other guys, well, what does that look like for everybody else? first and foremost, because tonight it basically looked like we're just going to match up hunt. And uh, DJ Zulo tweeted out about it during the game that he didn't think he'd ever seen a Nick team hunt matchups like this, which, and that makes sense because there's never been a Nick team that had the capability to hunt matchups like this. And so that's what they were doing. And the result of that though, was the augment, the offense was getting really stagnant. And even when they were up te- at 13, and you can, you can, anybody watching along on our U- the KFS YouTube channel, because we did our watch along tonight, can attest to this. I said at the mo- at the time, I said, I don't feel great about this game. I don't feel like the Knicks have been particularly good. I thought they were up by that many points because through that portion of the game, they were the more tenacious team. I haven't mentioned Josh Hart's name yet. He was certainly the best Nick tonight. We hope he's okay. And and yet there will still be people who will who will question his impact on on this team and how he impacts winning. I I 
I don't know what more this man could prove there. As far as I'm concerned, their chances of winning this game went out the window when he had to leave because he couldn't, I mean, he just couldn't hold up because he had hurt his knee. I, I sure hope Josh Hart's okay for Wednesday or at the very least it's, he's not out for long. Um, but that was so much of that was Josh Hart. Uh, the fact that they were up in this game because of, of the offensive rebounds and all the Josh Hart stuff that Josh Hart does. He had some negative plays too, but he was the player of the game. And the Cavs were just missing shots. And at one point, I think it was either the late third or early fourth quarter in this game, uh, the Cavs were shooting like 23% from three. They ended up shooting 33%, and a lot of that's on Darius Garland, who went absolutely insane in the fourth quarter. Uh, for as great as Evan Mobley was, on the defensive end, I, I think you have to give the player of the game to to uh, Garland because he was so good. But I digress. So there there were reasons the Knicks were up in this game. Those reasons really did not have to do with the fact that the offense was particularly good. Um, I want to say, before I go on, give credit to the Cavs defense. I thought, with all due respect to Boston, from what we saw for Boston on opening night, this is the best defense that the Knicks have seen. Uh, granted, they've only seen two defenses before tonight, but this is the best defense the Knicks have seen this year. And honestly, I've, I've been trying to watch a, a, a goodly amount of the early season basketball. The Cavs are as impressive as any defense that I've seen, maybe this side of Oklahoma City, uh, so far in the early going, because Mobley is really, is really just like he's taking a leap, I think, on both ends. But it definitely shows up on the defensive end. And just like their less heralded players are really digging in. Darius Garland, especially, was I thought he was really good defensively tonight. You know, your your Dean Wades of the world, and like even like some of their again, their less heralded players, like George Niang made a great defensive stop at one point on OG Ananobi. Like that's George Niang. You know, that's a mentality. You just you have buy-in or you don't, and right now the caps have buy-in. So again, give them credit. All that being said. I did not think the Knicks were doing a great job of putting pressure on them. And that brings us back to Towns. And that brings us back to this whole idea of you got this guy to open up the offense. Okay, now what? And we've seen it in spurts. Like, we definitely see, like, okay, anytime they're, you know, the Knicks are five out or four and a half out with Josh Hart in the game. And, you know, there's a screen or whatever. And, and someone's out there guard, guarding Towns and, a defense isn't locked in. Well, look, there's somebody streaking towards the basket. Well, this defense was locked in. Those plays weren't really there tonight. So what else are you going to do? What are you going to do when you have an offense that or a defense that much like Boston was very comfortable switching everything? Now, the difference between the Cavs and the Celtics is that the Cavs or the, the Celtics switch everything and they're just totally fine with it like that. There's nothing that the, 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 the Celtics switch where it creates a true matchup advantage for the other team because all their defenders are, are versatile and very good. The Cavs were giving up good, in, in theory, good matchup advantages. But when they were giving up those switches and they were giving up those good matchup advantages, there was another one of their strong defenders kind of shading off over here, shading off over there. A lot of times it was Evan Mobley. So there's opportunities. But in order to fully exploit those opportunities, you got to move the ball. And the Knicks tonight had 22 assists on 40 made field goals. That's actually better than I uh, thought they would have. At, for a while, their assist rate in this game, for the for the for a lot of this game, their assist rate was under 50, which is not obviously where you want to be. Um, so how are you going to exploit teams that are giving you something, but they're but maybe they're not giving you everything you want? And for tonight, a lot of it was just like a lot of Knicks go on one-on-one. -on -one. And yes, it was a lot of Jalen Brunson on a night when Jalen Brunson didn't have it. And you look up the final shot totals, Jalen Jalen Brunson short, uh, shot it 24 times, eight times in the fourth quarter, uh, had tip to Andrew Claudio for, for that number. I did not realize that. Um, and he only made eight. It was not his night. Now, am I ever going to criticize Jalen Brunson for shooting the ball? No, I'm not. That I know that there are just completely and totally nonsensical conversations, not even conversations, just like people shouting at clouds, talking about, you know, Jalen Brunson needs to elevate himself as like a true point guard, whatever the hell that is. Like Jalen Brunson's a, a pretty darn good passer. You look at his assist rate last year, and I think it shows that. Um, but he's small. 
And there are certain limitations that he has where he just doesn't see as much as bigger point guards see. That's always going to be there. That said, he could always be better, and he'll be the first person to tell you that. So I think tonight the balance was a little off. But again, is that because Jalen Brunson is being selfish? Is that because Jalen Brunson is like has guys like wide open, you know, uh, for a kick out three, and he's just blatantly ignoring them? No, it's not. Or at least I I didn't see it. I'm sure there were a couple of those instances, but I don't I don't feel like this is a selfishness problem because I just don't think Jalen Brunson is a selfish player. I don't think he has a selfish bone in his body. I think he's a winner, and I think he more often than not thinks that a shot leaving his hand is the best chance of 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 a shot going in. No, I think this is something that is larger than that. And I think it is, again, the necessity of everybody, including the coaching staff, to figure out how to get these guys to gel sooner rather than later. Now, should we be lamenting the fact that their offense looked like it did after this team has played three regular season, season games together against a defense uh, for a team whose infrastructure has been together for the last what is it for? Is this the fourth year of the Donovan? Mi no, this is the third year of the Donovan Mitchell era. So, no, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's the, it's the third year. So, three years going on three years. Um, no, that's that's too much to expect, and it's not reasonable to expect that. Would have been nice to still get the win, but this is going to take time. So now the question becomes: Okay, how do you figure that out? And more specifically, how do you figure out the cat piece of it? Because it, there is. No universe where Carl Anthony Town should ever play 32 minutes in a basketball game and get, and Carl Anthony Towns ends up with eight shots. But again, it was really seven. As I just look at uh, Benji, Benji's uh, grades for tonight. Um, and, and as he gives Towns a D plus and gives every other starter a better grade, although notably Brunson a C minus, but like, a lot of this is on Cat, and Cat has to figure out himself how to get himself involved, and that's going to be a challenge. And did it help that the the moments that he had tonight, other than what I one really nice little jump hook over Evan Mobley, um, where he kind of demanded the ball and like posted up, like I thought he had some not great possessions. I also thought there were other possessions where he got the ball and just didn't really make anything happen with it now just like i'm not going to sit here and kill jalen brunson for taking 24 shots i'm not going to kill carl anthony towns either because carl anthony towns is just like everybody is getting adjusted to this new offense towns is getting adjusted to his role on this team and how much is too much and how much is not nearly enough and when is he supposed to find his shots and how is he supposed to or, or what shots is he supposed to be taking now again because all of this stuff is connected Part of this is taking threes. And the Knicks, yet again, failed to crack 33 point attempts, I think. Yeah, 28 three point attempts. They are going to be damn near bottom of the league after tonight in three pointers attempted per game. Again, not good enough. Needs to be better. None of this is news. I don't think any of this is controversial. The question is how, because it's not just simply, all right, guys got to jack up more threes. No, it's, it's, it's how do you generate good looks from three? And I think that's where I can, for me, I could connect the two dots because I think if the Knicks play this same game three months from now, hopefully it doesn't take that long, but just for, you know, a while from now, a ways out and the Cavs are doing all the switching and, and, you know, they're comfortable with it. I think the Knicks will become a team where those switches will generate open threes, or at least that has to be the hope. And then it's up to guys who to be willing to take them. Now you look at the three point attempts tonight. Towns took two bridges four, OG four, Brunson four, Hart. <laughs> again, things that should not ever be the case. Josh Hart should never have the second most three-point attempts on your basketball team. I don't care who else is on your basketball team. He should not have the second most three-point attempts on your team. If Jalen Brunson and Carl Anthony Towns and Mikal Bridges are on your team, Josh Hart really shouldn't have the second most three-point attempts. So everything's kind of out of whack right now. Um, 
it's been three games. I still don't think we've ever seen the Knicks offense look particularly like really good, like humming good. I thought they had some nice moments against Boston. And obviously they won the game against Indiana. But like I, I still think they're kind of searching and they're still trying to figure it out. Um on the defensive end, it same thing, work in progress, some good tonight, some bad tonight. If we're being honest, if the Cavs had even decent shooting luck on open threes from a lot of guys that like usually hit those, Knicks probably give up 120, 125 points tonight, if not more. So I think you could look at the defense and say the defense is just as much of a work in progress as the offense. Um, and again, part of that is is Towns. The, so again, every, it's all a learning process. For the first time tonight, Towns, fa well, he faced two things tonight. One, he faced a uh, relentless driver of the basketball in Donovan Mitchell. And Donovan Mitchell tonight only took 17 shots and eight of those were threes. So only only nine uh, attempts inside the arc. It wasn't just him, um, but he's the he's the main guy who who drives it for them. Uh, Garland drove it a little bit too. Um, eight threes out of 19 attempts. And so it's a matter of, okay, you know, after the, the, the like, if, if you're a low man, like, what can you do to prevent a good attempt? And just had some good moments, some not so good moments. But then the other side of it is when it's a, a center who's kind of going at you. And I thought Mobley went at him a little bit tonight. And I thought it was interesting in the fourth quarter. Oh, we're going to talk about Huck Porty in a second. Um, in the fourth quarter, when Cat came uh, back into the game after he was out for a brief stint, it was not Towns on Mobley. It was OG on Mobley. And he actually made a nice defensive play and 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 helped get a stop uh, there in the final minutes. So, you know, that's going to be interesting to watch moving forward, uh, matchups in, in tight games late. Um, there's just a lot to work on right now. As I just saw, uh, this is again, uh, James Edward III, uh, Tibbs on where the game was lost. We missed some shots, gave up some easy ones in transition. That hurt us. So Tibbs not really in a, in a talking, talking mood tonight. Uh, that's a, that's a nothing answer. Um, yeah. And he knows it as well as anyone. There's a lot they need to figure out. There's another one from Tibbs courtesy of James Edwards third. Uh, and this is about them not getting up enough threes. It's a combination of everything. We have to generate more. Sometimes it's a, by a byproduct of deep paint decisions. Yeah. And um, sorry, one more part. Asked if how teams are defending or spacing issues causing, or asked him if how teams are defending or spacing issues causing low three-point numbers. There's no, there's no answer there. Um, I thought the deep paint decisions were terrible tonight. Uh, and it was not just Jalen Brunson, although there are a few from Brunson that I could certainly think of. A lot of times guys got into the paint and challenged the Cavs rim protection down low. And I just, I did not work out well. So a lot of, a lot of room for growth. How about that? A lot of, I'm talking about like upward mobility. There's a lot of room to get better. Um, that's a good thing. The tough thing is that, you know, you look around the league and you look at some of the teams that are winning games, like, I'm like, we'll do the full scoreboard later, but I'm I'm looking at some of the teams who won games tonight, and it's a lot of competitive teams out there, you know. So rest of this week, Miami and Detroit, like neither of those games are gonna be easy. So got to learn on the fly.